today I'm going to try and make Sol Janeiro's Brazilian Bum Bum Cream. Had a lot of fun figuring this one out, so keep watching to see if I managed it. So I'm trying to recreate this for fun to better understand the ingredients and how they work together. I'm self-taught and I learn a lot from these experiments, I hope you do as well. Um, the end product, if successful, will be for personal use and won't be for sale. It's much less expensive, obviously, for you to go out and purchase this product from the rightful creators, Sol Janeiro. However, if you're already a cosmetic formulator and you like formulating dupes uh, and experiments, then watch this video and read the blog that I've linked below because it has a lot more information in it because uh, it can be a lot of fun figuring these things out. Um, I'm not affiliated with this product and this is not a paid promotion, purely an experiment. Uh, the ingredients list is vast and some I struggle to get here in the UK so the best thing to do is work out key ingredients uh, based on their ingredients list. The purpose of the cream as it says on the tub uh, is fast absorbing body cream and visibly tighten the appearance of skin. So we need to look at the ingredients list and pick out the ingredients that will contribute to these things then I'll put them in my spreadsheet to help me work things out. Okay, so here's my Excel spreadsheet. Um, it's a bit of a mess. Um, what I've done is the actual ingredients over here, and then the function of them here, uh, intended usage rate, uh, suggested rather, is in here. Um, a bit of information about how to use and its stability, anything of note, and then I've got alternatives down there. So what I'm gonna do is just collapse this column for now. Um, this is a bit of a key, so anything in this peachy colour I've substituted um, because I found an all-in-one emulsifier that includes all three of these ingredients. Um, so what I've done is ordered that, um, that makes this hopefully a little bit easier um, and less expensive. And then uh, this indicates I've omitted ingredients. So these are things that are either unnecessary because that's part of the perfuming, but I actually have a fragrance that is um, designed to be like the cream, so I don't need this. And then uh, these are things that I just couldn't get hold of. So unfortunately I've had to get rid of them, which is a shame um, because uh, a couple of them are actually quite good um, but you know so goes it sometimes you can't find ingredients I couldn't find substitutes because I'm not familiar enough with the formula yet so maybe once I've made it once I might be able to make tweaks later um, for some of them I have made substitutes so uh, phenyl trimethicone I couldn't find that um, but reading about it very similar to dimethicone um, so I'm going to swap it for that but I will perhaps also the percentage to be a little bit lower because it depends what type of dimethicone you're using as well um, some are thicker than others um, so I'll have to see what I've got in stock and then dodecane I don't have that um, but it's to help reduce the greasy feeling um, which I know that C12 to 15 alkyl benzoate does really well um, so I'm going to replace it for that then if we scroll down I've got uh, glycerol caprolate um, which I've actually found uh, somewhere and that's that's called combi mulse um, so I've, uh, I've purchased that and then these down here um, they're your allergens that are contained within the fragrances so you don't need to worry about those so that's my chart um, now what I'll do is I'll look at the order they're listed um, on the actual cream, the recommended usage rates, and those two things will help me determine what phase things go in and at what percentage. So here's the formula that I came up with. Uh, we'll need a pre-prepared hyaluronic acid stock, so if you're unsure how to make this, go and watch my video all about hyaluronic acid. I've linked that below. Uh, so let's give this a go. 
I needed to get organized for this as there's so many ingredients so I pre-weighed and labeled everything in order uh, so that formulating went smoothly. Okay so we're going to start with phase A and just weigh out your 99 grams of distilled water and just pour a little bit into another beaker and add your sodium phytate. Uh, the sodium phytate uh, helps to stabilize the formula and also to enhance the efficacy of the preservative. Um, you just want to dissolve that until the water is clear. It does take some agitation and some time, but you will get there. Then in another beaker, add your vegetable glycerin, because um, what we're going to do here is use it to disperse the xanthan gum and the mica so that they don't clump when we add them to the water. So then in goes the mica, and then you just need to mix that up very thoroughly until it's a nice sort of clear transparentish paste um, like this and then you can put it to the side and work on your next part of phase a um, and this is the remainder of your water and then your Sepinov EMT10. This is one of the emulsifiers that we're using. It's the same uh, one as was listed in the Sol Janeiro. Um, so we're just mixing this a little bit. As you can see, it's not going to dissolve in the water very well itself. So what you need to do is use a stick blender and shear mix this. Uh, it's recommended to mix it for between 5 and 20 minutes depending how long it takes. They say to mix it until you either can't see any grains and it's nice and smooth or until it's perfectly clear. So this is fairly clear, we've just added a lot of bubbles with the shear mixer um, so this is now good to go. This took about 10 minutes. So we're going to put that aside and then we'll bring back our other parts of phase A. Um, so we've got our sodium phytate and then our glycerin mix and we're just going to pour them all together in the same beaker and give them a stir and that's your completed phase A ready for heating. For lots more information on why I chose these ingredients and what they do, please refer to the blog that I've linked below um, as I've described my entire process of figuring out uh, this formula. Um, and that will give you a starting point if you do want to make it yourself, if you have any of these ingredients to hand. Uh, so that's your phase A. And now we're going to get on with phase B, the oil phase. So grab yourself another beaker and into that uh, we're first going to start on with our Emulsan 2MB and um, this is another emulsifier um, again the ingredients of this emulsifier were listed on the original uh, Dimethicone is one of my substitutes does pretty much the same job as one of the ingredients listed um, and it will make uh, a nice sort of texture and skin feel then we've got C12 to 15 alkyl benzoate, one of my favourites. It helps uh, prevent the greasy feeling on the skin. Uh, then uh, caprylic, capric triglycerides. This is uh, again a nice ester. Combimulse, another one of the emulsifiers, um, which will help to thicken and obviously to mix the oil and water. Uh, coconut oil, I've used a liquid coconut oil, but if you've got uh, the solidified stuff, that's fine. Um, I don't know how to pronou pronounce this, acai or acia oil, not sure. Um, however it's spelt, look for that. It smells quite earthy and it is quite green. I'm sure it's had an impact on the colour of the uh, overall formula, but it is listed. Um, then Kapukueku butter, <laughs> I don't know how you pronounce that. Um, that goes in as well. That's really nice. It's like as soft as sheer butter, but it smells like cocoa butter. It's really nice. Uh, then Brazil nut seed oil. Again, it was listed on the ingredients, so we're using that. And then once we've got that in there, it's quite thick. It's solidified in the bottle. Um, then we've got squalane. And then 
we have our settle alcohol we're used to that that's moisturizing thickening uh, nice ingredient to add okay and that is our oil phase so we're going to mix that up you can see how that uh, that oil has really made this quite colorful and then we need to heat our water phase and our oil phase separately we're going to do this in a bain-marie this is where i forgot to video again so weigh your water phase heat them both in a bain-marie and replace any water left lost to evaporation as you usually would and as usual when you're making a cream you need to make your emulsion so pour your water phase into your oil phase and then we're going to use the stick blender or if you have a sheer mixer use that uh, to blend it together to create our emulsion do this until it starts to thicken and you're sure that you've got your emulsion and then as usual you need to let it cool down so we're going to leave it cool to 40 degrees c before we start adding our cool down phase ingredients at this point the texture will be quite thin but that's because it is also quite hot um, so the longer you leave it the more it will thicken and it looks a bit green at the moment but don't worry about that for now because it, it does get changed by the extracts a bit later on uh, so we'll just leave this to cool down and uh, then we'll get on to adding those if you have a digital thermometer uh, infrared then that's great uh, they are very useful for checking the temperature because you don't have to be putting anything into your formula and um, that's what i've used here um, now it's cooled down we're going to add our hyaluronic acid stock now this may seem like a lot as in a big percentage of the formula but remember that it's mostly water so it comes from your water phase percentage uh, then we're adding our preservative. I like Saligard PCG for creams, it's very effective. Um, four grams of the fragrance oil. I get this from Soak Rochford. Um, they liked this cream and created uh, this very similar fragrance. It's not exactly the same, um, but it does have a lot of similar notes. So uh, they've kindly uh, given a code. If you'd like to buy it, you can get a 5% discount. Uh, you can see that link below. Then I'm adding the carrot seed oil and our uh, extracts. Unfortunately, the, the only two extracts I was able to find, uh, there was a third one. Can't find it anywhere. If you can, please do let me know. Um, and of course the vitamin E. Um, I like adding that to everything and it was listed in the ingredients list. Then mix that by hand. Uh, you can shear mix it, but shear mixing does create air um, within the product after you add the final ingredients. Um, and we don't want to create too much air. So we'll just mix it by hand, but very thoroughly. Um, and then we're pretty much ready to jar it up. Except I like to leave it for at least uh, 24 hours um, before I jar things and also I forgot we need to take the pH pH of this actually came out quite high to start with um, and uh, my, my pH meter is actually reading a bit high at the moment um, so I had to adjust this down with a bit of citric acid um, to get it to around a 5 5.5 5. Once you're happy with your pH adjustment, write it down so you know exactly how much you used and then next time taking the pH should just be a formality rather than having to figure it all out again. Um, so now let's jar up. I left the cream covered for 24 hours before pouring to check if the viscosity had changed. It was slightly thicker but not as thick as the Sol Janeiro version. Um, so the Sol Janeiro version is a nice medium strength scent and it lingers on the skin. Uh, it's a subtle pastel orange colour, uh, beautifully silky, medium thick. Um, its appearance is shiny and smooth and it absorbs really, really fast. It leaves a gorgeous powdery feeling on the skin and there's no movement in the container if I turn it upside down. Um, my dupe is a pleasant tropical scent, not identical, but then the fragrance oil wasn't a copy, just inspired by. Um, 
I could do with a bit more fragrance oil if if for allows um, as the extracts and oils they're quite earthy in scent and I do feel like they need a bit more masking um, it's silky and shiny and smooth in appearance like the original um, the colors a bit darker but I think this is due to the oils and extracts and likely my percentages of the other ingredients not watering those down enough um, it absorbs just as fast as the original it leaves a gorgeous powdery feel on the skin like the original um, thinner viscosity obviously you can see here um, but still nice and would work very well as a lotion version in a pump bottle um, if I was going to give it a second go I'd probably increase the fragrance as I said earlier um, the cetyl alcohol, the xanthan gum and the emulsifiers slightly uh, to gain more scent and a thicker texture um, with the exception of the viscosity though and the scent needing increasing I am really happy with this attempt um, it's incredibly similar um, if you overlook the colour and the texture it absorbs the same, it feels the same, it smells pretty much the same um, yeah so that's how I do a dupe. Um, if you haven't read the blog, go read the blog. I do describe my process of working all this out, um, so it will be a bit less frantic than this video, and hopefully you'll learn something and can give your own dupes a try. If there's anything else you'd like to see me have a go at duping, then pop it in the comments or send me an email and I'll have a look at it. Um, but I really hope you enjoyed this and uh, <laughs> Yeah, I'm quite pleased. If you like this video, please check out my other videos. I have lots on my channel already, and I do try to post each week. Um, subscribe and hit the bell icon so you get notified when I upload. I also have a Patreon where I post two exclusive formulas a month, along with giving patrons early access to YouTube content and formulation, regulation and business blogs uh, to help with DIY cosmetic makers and businesses. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.